Hello, welcome to the Daily Devotion. I'm Kathy Morris, pastor of the Dixon United Methodist Church. The letters to Timothy that we find in the New Testament give us a glimpse of a tender regard that that existed between the Apostle Paul and a young co-worker in the faith named Timothy. The expressions of love and encouragement are very personal and they help us to, to see and to understand the real people who were working and serving to share the love of Christ in the gospel. I'm reading today from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 3 through 7 from the New Revised Standard Version. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now, I'm sure, lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. There's an awful lot going on in these four verses, but for today I want to, to focus focus on the, the opening words that we find. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience. To worship with a clear conscience. To live with a clear conscience. This is not easy. It really is something that we have to focus on. I know that when self-interest, when the desire for attention, when pride, when, pre, when ego gratification, when they're living just below the surface, we can find ourselves getting into trouble. Alas, when self-interest is in the driver's seat, we end up in places we really don't want to go. Thomas Ken was a, a bishop in the, in the Church of England in the 17th century. Now, in his role as bishop, he had to deal with the king. And unfortunately, even though kings may have been the head of the church in name, in the practice of their lives, they really were not. Thomas Ken refused to use the house of the royal mistress. Now, King Charles II, rather than being offended and, and wanting to uh, take the bishopric away from Thomas Ken. He actually admired him for his boldness. Thomas Ken was also a poet and a hymn writer. And in one of his poems, he expresses his desire to, to live each day with a clear conscience. For him, a clear conscience was a way for him to, to experience oneness with God and to live in God's glory. Lord, I my vow to thee renew. Scatter my sins as morning dew. Guard my first springs of thought and will, and with thyself my spirit fill. Direct, control, suggest this day all I design or do or say, that all my powers with all their might in thy soul glory may unite. When God is directing us, all of our powers are able to unite. Unite to serve the purpose of God's glory. We are more effective and more fruitful when we live with a clear conscience, when we are able to set self-interest aside and to truly serve God. It is our faithfulness to God that makes all the difference. Now for a prayer exercise, what I'd like to suggest that you try is let your fingers represent your, your powers, your talents, your abilities, and then bring them together. 
just lace them together like this. And as you do this, ask God to guide and direct you, to guide and direct you throughout the day so that you may use all of your powers in the service of God's glory.